Okay, this is going to be uh, fairly controversial and uh, maybe upsetting to some people. And I will for certainly say at the outset of here, there's no way to tell if this is if this is uh, actual going to happen or not. It's it's uh, up to speculation. Uh, maybe completely wrong here, and and I'm not even sure that uh, uh, the person I'm going to look at ha is right. But this is a uh, article uh, from a guy named uh, Peter. And I can never pronounce his name, but anyway, he calls goes by his name of uh, Hyperlipid, and he is a uh, someone who I think has a lot of insight into human physiology, and he's been doing this for a number of years, and uh, has a uh, you know just a great deal of insight into this stuff. And he was talking about uh, GLP-1 agonists, and these are these new drugs out there, semaglutide, liraglutide, and some of these other ones with Govi and things like that, that are being used as weight loss drugs. Initially, they were, they were utilized. Uh, uh, for diabetes and now have gotten a secondary use in weight loss drugs. And a very popular celebrity thing, you know, and people are losing weight. It, it works via, uh, well, a GLP-1 agonist, and it seems to suppress appetite. But he, he you know, he dove into the physiology on this, and, and this is, you know, somewhat uh, maybe uh, at a deeper level. I'll link it so you guys can read it yourself. Basically what it shows is, you know, you see a basically a thermogenic uncoupling of the fat cells and you get fat cell hyperplasia. So, so typically with obesity, the, the fat cells get bigger and bigger and bigger. And we have, you know, a relatively fixed number of fat cells in our body and as they get bigger and bigger, we just get, we just get fatter and they become insulin resistant and we have all these problems down the road. And the drug apparently uncouples the, uh, the, the, uh, thermogen the, the, the thermogenesis from these cells so that they stay small. And that is considered protective in many, many, many cases, that if your cells stay small and don't get big, that that you know, ultimately provides some protection here. But the concern that he brings up is that you know, with this, there, there are two things. One was there were a number of studies that were done randomized control trials that showed an increased risk of breast cancer. Uh, and there were some uh, you know, in humans and then also in, in, in vitro which is in, in, in lab culture. And, and so the comment that he makes, which I thought was quite strange, and I, you know, and this is something that, you know, as someone who is skeptical of the pharmaceutical industry, as someone who has seen many, many, many drug companies find many, many billions of dollars for basically lying, for committing fraud, and this is someone who's worked, you know, this is discussing this, has worked in this sort of industry for many, many years as far as seeing a lot of these things. And but what his comment was, was that, Currently, the risk of promoting breast cancer by GLP-1 agonists is taken sufficiently, sufficiently seriously to have promoted a systematic review and meta-analysis to bury said risk, which is a very, I thought, a very uh, snarky type of comment. And what he's saying is basically they saw a signal that breast cancer was there and then they did a big systematic analysis to kind of bury the risk so that no one could seem at fault. Now, is that something a pharmaceutical company would do? You know, <laughs> who knows, you know, and, and it could just be that, the, you know, they did a systematic analysis and it shows no increased risk and that's what's going on. And that's very, very plausible and possible as well. But, you know, that comment there I thought was just quite, quite interesting. And as we know, we've seen that very thing happen. A lot of, a lot of uh, medical fraud has, uh, clinical fraud has happened within these pharmaceutical companies. So it's interesting that that's there. But the more, one of the more interesting things to me is, you know, he talks about, you know, the fact that we have this, these sort of very insulin sensitive, sensitive hyperplastic cells, lots and lots of little cells. And, you know, when the drug, either he thinks it's going to be pulled from the market, you know, his, uh, his comment is here is, you know, uh, eventually these drugs will be withdrawn. So what will happen to folks with years of adipocyte hyperplasia where individual cell hypertrophy has been suppressed? The very numerous small adipocyte cells will, without their uncoupling drug, become enormous. People will become hungry as they develop hypertrophy of all those lovely tiny insulin ad adipocytes. Oops, it's going to be bad, but that's years down the road. So what he's suggesting is, you know, you're on this drug that uncouples your, your cells, and they become very small and many, many lots and lots of them. And when you get off the drug, you know, either it's recalled or you can no longer afford it or insurance company cancels it or whatever, then you get a rebound effect with all these cells. You become hungry again and, you, and these cells just hypertrophy and you gain more weight. And whether that's going to happen or not is, is again, it's purely speculative, right? I'm not saying this is definitely happening. But it's interesting, you know, I had I, I put this post up on Instagram. We, you know, of course, we had a couple of physicians calling me, a, you know, every name in the book. How dare you question a pharmaceutical drug? Um, 
you know, and what was interesting, we had a couple people in there saying that their experience with these drugs, and one of the persons, you know, basically said this, basically, when I got off the drug, I became ravenously hungry. I gained 50 pounds right away, more than I was before, and then had to work it off with, um, you know, diet and exercise, like probably most people should be doing in the first place. I think the short answer is, typically there is no free lunches here, guys. I mean, you know, basically trying to take a shortcut, you know, often will, you know, result in, in uh, uh, negative problems. Now, again, I, you know, the potential is, you know, let's just say, and again, the potential for weight loss, for, for removing obesity is huge. I mean, it helps a lot of things. It reduces your risk for cancer and many other uh, things that are, that are associated with it. So, you know, maybe the, the risk of cancer, if it's even there, is relatively small relative to the benefit for losing weight. But I think what we'll see is many people will be prescribed this drug with no lifestyle intervention. They'll just, you know, they'll, just, they'll, they'll, kill, they'll still eat their garbagey food. They'll go on the drug for, you know, a couple of years, lose some weight. For whatever reason, maybe they come off, maybe they can't tolerate it, maybe they can't afford it, and then they, they, they continue in their crappy lifestyle, and they go back and do, they have this awesome, you know, awful rebound effect. Um, now, let's say you can get somebody to lose that initial 20, 30 pounds, so they feel better so they can start exercising, you can also clean up their diet at the same time. To me, that may make sense. That may, may, may be a win here. So anyway, um, I will, again, caveat, I'm not a fan of, of the pharmaceutical industry, as, as you guys well know. Uh, I think there are some drugs that are, that are effective and be, be helpful, but I think there's a lot of, uh, particularly these days, there's a lot of corruption that's going on. I mean, we see it at the FDA, we see it at places like the CDC, we see it where, you know, these companies are paying basically to get drug approval. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, we're, you know, we're seeing these drugs withdrawn from the market, not, not far afterwards. So anyway, just buyer beware. Ca I think caution is always, it's better to be, you know, uh, and this is something I learned in medical school, you know, and, and as a surgeon, they said, you know, is, you know, it's, it's not good to be the last guy, but it's not good to be the first guy. You know, it's just kind of like, just kind of sit back and watch for a while and see what happens, you know, give it, give it, you know, give it, a, give it a little bit of time, maybe a couple of years and see. Uh, what's actually happening here because these drugs, while you know, they certainly are causing a lot of people to lose weight, there's no doubt about that. Is there going to be some downward effect downstream? Perhaps. Perhaps there is. Perhaps it'll be a, a significant effect. And, and uh, you know, we'll just have to see. All right. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, World Carnivore Month Day 4 is underway. I'm starting out with a couple of ribeye steaks. Uh, things are going well. Uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, I just feel wonderful doing this this way with just straight beef and beef and salt and water and that's what works for me. I don't know what works for you guys, but all right, we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.